Well, good morning. Welcome to Garden America. We are in studio, of course. I'm Brian Maine, John Bagnasco, Tyler Pal Tyler or Taylor? What are we going by? Tiger? Tiger. You, you like Tiger. Okay. Yeah. Zebra. Tiger. Zebra. <laughs> Tiger Palafox. He's going to use that in 2023. Anyway, we are back for our special New Year's Eve show. New Year Eve show. John, is there an apostrophe there somewhere? New yes, Year's Eve? New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. Right. And, but we say Happy New Year. Yes. Happy New Year, yeah. but it's New Year's Eve. Not Happy New Year's. Right. Possessive. Because we're not celebrating multiple years. We've gone over that. Exactly. It's one year we celebrate. <laughs> well, anyway. you want to know why it's Christmas Eve and not Christmas Eve. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but that's because there's two S's. Eves. So when there's, but when there's an S and it's possessive, you put the little apostrophe hyphen thing at, at the, the end. end, right? That's only if it's plural usually, though. So we're going to be kidding. holding an English class later on here kidding. in studio. To go over proper grammar. Yeah. Thank you for joining us, though. We've got 21 people already tuned in, and we just got started a minute into the show. You know, I think if 2022 was a good year, but I'm, I'm really starting to feel the pressure. Can we make 2023 better? Yeah. Of course, you we feel, make every year better. You feel the pressure of making the year better? Yeah, because <laughs> it was so good. Really? There were some things that could have been improved on. There's always ups and downs. Yeah. Every year. I have a list every for you, Brian, on things yeah. I'd like you to improve on. That, it's in thank an email. You. It's well, in an email. He cares. <laughs> he does it because he cares about me, you know, and he cares about my public perception. I want to hear about um, from our listeners about some of their New Year's, New Year's gardening resolutions. Yeah. What is it you want to do in the garden or make better in the garden? Yeah. Do better in the garden? Three, three resolutions. One, one is, for about 40 years, I've been thinking of making a knot garden. That's right. And I'm, I'm going to do it. Okay, <laughs> people want to know what a knot garden is. not do that again. A you know, it's garden? funny because, I like that, Tiger. because it actually is a garden. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a knot garden. Yeah. But it's things that you don't want to plant. I'm not going to plant that. No. I'm not going to plant that. No, not right? at all. Oh. <laughs> not. <laughs> it's K-N-O-T. Okay. And a knot garden is uh, a garden with plants put in such a fashion that it looks like they're, they're growing as pretzels or different ways into each other. Yeah. So my tiger might help me with that. Yeah, I'm looking forward Tiger's to gonna, it. Tiger's going to help Should me. I... Another one of my resolutions is to get my landscaping done around the house because that's Cause my, wife, <laughs> that's Cause my wife's can, resolution right? for me. How, many, how, how long have you been in the house now? Just a year. Right. So right? I kind of feel like that's the perfect time in the sense of so, yeah. you, know, you know the house now. So you know what you want around. We had a show about that. Probably early last year, uh -huh. I say last year, maybe early to tw uh, 2022, with somebody who said the very same thing. Yeah. Move in, get settled, you know, get the lay of the land, and yeah. then decide what you're going to do. Figure out the windows. Right. Figure out, you know, the, the sun coming in here or right. whatever. Because you you have good ideas for your garden when you they're in your head. But then when you actually want to put it in the yard, sometimes you make a mistake and why not live in it for a little while? Well, we all have different gardening uh, specialties. And my idea of gardening is, can I dig a hole there? Yeah. And I'll put this plant in it. Right. My wife's idea of gardening is she wants a cohesive landscape. Yeah. And so that's one of Tiger's specialties, and so he's going to come help me with that. And you really, and she says, you, or you've said she really also likes symmetry, too. Which oh, too some, much symmetry. Which though. sometimes in a garden also is difficult because yeah. gardens are not symmetrical. They're right. not really supposed to be symmetrical. Didn't we have an interview about that yep. in the last couple of two or three weeks? Yeah. Well, some gardens are supposed to be symmetrical. Right. Uh, those are mostly European gardens. We saw a lot of that when wow. we were in England, right? Yep. Why don't you put up a poisonous garden? You can mirror the one in, was it in, in England? It was in uh, Slovenia or the, something. No, no, no. It was England, and it was the Duchess of Northumberland mm -hmm. had that. Uh, everything poisonous. Everything in the garden was poisonous. It had a skull and crossbones right. on the gate that you opened and to And you know what you could do to be garden. a little different? Add some venomous snake, snakes in that garden. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be a little bit different. Yeah, then, then, you know, and it, probably a great security system. Well, yeah. we've, we have venomous snakes on our property. Yeah, with that, they don't need a... Yeah, we don't need to add any. Oh, bring in some exotics, you know, like uh, cobras, cobras, yeah. and, and some cottonmouths, and yeah. uh, 
What are those coral snakes that are like in the water and yeah, black yeah. mambas. Black yeah. mambas. There you go. Yeah, that sounds dangerous. <laughs> you know why they're no. called black mambas? Not mamas. <laughs> they're mambas. <laughs> I said mamba, and this is not Kobe. I'm not talking about Kobe Bryant. The because inside of their mouth is black. Oh, really? When they open their mouth, it's all black inside. Hmm. And so, what's the mamba part? That's the species <laughs> derived from. I would imagine Latin somewhere, John, right? <laughs> John, come on. Does, does mamba What's... mean mouth? <laughs> I think it means mother. There's pop, 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 bums. Pop, pop, <laughs> Mom, pop bums. Bums. I don't know. Pom anyway, bums. we do get off track here, but thank yes. you for all the wonderful comments already on Facebook. Look at this. Um, here's somebody. Uh, you better do better so, in 23. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to listen if I have to go through what I did in 2022. <laughs> You got one more year to shape up. COVID's um, over. I'm not stuck. I can do other things. Yes. <laughs> Stop wasting my time on Saturday mornings. So uh, yeah, we appreciate your comments. <laughs> so, so okay. Here is the thing, right? We have international gardeners. Okay, and gardening yes, is we do. obviously an outdoor thing that you do. And as John mentioned, I think the biggest fear he has, aside from walking out and a gopher eating one of his roses. Black mambas? Is, no, is a probably a rattlesnake, right? Like, if you're out, it's... I mean, I've never feared a rattlesnake. They're going well, to well, warn you well, no, first of here, all. Well, wait, let me... Where I'm getting to, okay? In the sense of the biggest thing that, you know, animal creature-wise that you can walk outside and see is a rattlesnake. For me, it would be. I'm not, I don't have cougars. I don't have these things. There are some people that live in environments that... When they are gardening, they have legitimate cobras, yes, snakes, things living in their I'll give you areas. One, I'll give you one example kind of, scary to of a country out. that has a lot of not like just bear, snakes, like but bear. but insects and poisonous things you don't want to mess with. Australia, yeah. Oh, they have ants, spiders, spiders, right? Things that you don't want to even come near, and yet they're outside. Yeah, you have to garden outside. And there could be that crazy spider. Could kill you in five seconds there, John. You you know you that know today's tomorrow in Australia. <laughs> is it's already tomorrow? Yeah, isn't it? So happy, uh, happy those year. of you listening and watching in Australia. Hope you're recovering. Welcome to the new year. <laughs> Hope you're recovering. Now, in John's case, or even your case, you would hear the rattlesnake before you yeah came across yeah, it because that's you. why they warn you. I'm here. Don't mess with me. So, but if you step on it quickly, you wouldn't have that. Although warning. I have ran into a few uh, rattlesnakes, and they don't always warn you. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah they don't always. No, those are the ones that like to say to each other, watch this. Yeah. I'm exactly. not going to rattle, and I'm yeah. just going to bite them. Just going to bite them. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, I mean, some people, like, uh, you know, if you're, if you're a, a gardener in Alaska. Um, Polar they bears. Have, they have, <laughs> I mean, just bears in general. Yeah. They have bears, and you'll be out there working, and all of a sudden – bear comes across your backyard like if you were gardening on kodiak yeah <laughs> moose. moose john has a quote of the year Ooh. not the quote of the week but this is the quote of the year as we welcome in 2023 and we say happy new year to all of our listeners on biz talk radio facebook live thank you for the wonderful comments i just got a uh, text from my wife happy so, new year no call me when the show's over oh huh. well that's not good <laughs> no, that's warning you know what? That's like in radio when you'd get that occasional call during your show from the PD, the program director. He'd like, say, hey, yeah, come see me after the show. <laughs> it's like, oh, man. So your whole rest of your show just goes into the toilet. Yeah. You know? What is this what about? Would, what would they tell you? Like, well, what sometimes song it you're was, playing? Sometimes it would, was, was Not, just like, hey, matter. by the way, we're going to start a contest on Monday. Yeah. Uh, but there's such a paranoid business anyway. <laughs> you know, because sometimes it is like, hey, I heard your show today. Yeah, knock it off. <laughs> Quit doing what you're doing. Yeah, what does that mean? Don't give the weather so many times during the show. Anyway, uh, John's quote of the year here. We're going to take a break. Again, no guests today because it's going to be just the three of us, our Facebook yeah, viewers. Yeah, we can reminisce about last year's gardening yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, ideas for the coming year. So those on Facebook Live, uh, let keep it active. Right. Uh, this quote is from Carl Chopik. Oh, and, uh, Chuck. You know what Carl's uh, famous for? Uh, well, he invented a word, Junior? actually. He invented a word? Mm hmm Well, I know his nickname was Chuck, even though his name was Carl, but other than that, I don't know. <laughs> Is the word he invented was robot. Oh. So anyway, he, he said, I tell you, 
There's no death, not even sleep. We only pass from one season to another. We must be patient with life, for it is eternal. And he was talking about robots. <laughs> no, he wasn't. He was not <laughs> talking about... He, uh, I think he wrote a book called uh, The Gardener's Year or A Gardener's Year. Really? Back in the 30s, 30s, which was, I think, when the term robot came out. Robots I have known. John, he uh, just shakes his head like, would you stop it? Okay, yeah. it is break time for our friends on BizTalk Radio. Thank you for tuning in. By the way, those on BizTalk Radio, this is last week's show, so it's already the new year, already the new year when you listen to this show. On Biz Talk Radio. Happy 2020. For the rest of us, it's Facebook Live. Going to take a break. Back after these messages on Biz Talk Radio. Welcome to Garden America. Welcome back to the show. Those on Facebook Live, a much quicker break. Those on Biz Talk Radio. Thank you for your support. I want to thank Stephanie and her team for keeping us on the air every single week. The good folks at the network and our affiliates. Thank you for tuning in to Garden America. Those on Facebook Live, let's keep things active this morning. Talk about maybe some New Year's resolutions in terms of gardening. I know, John, you're going to quit drinking, which is good. <laughs> Finally. Finally. Intervention work. Intervention. That's one of the things I feel bad about is that I can't quit, quit drinking unless I start. <laughs> I gotta uh, think about that one for a yeah. while. Yeah. You like your, your wine. You like your vino, though. You're a vino guy. It, it not made anymore, sense, but, he but said, I... the one thing I feel bad for. He goes, he, I can't, I can't feel bad unless I start to quit. <laughs> <laughs> you don't drink your, your off the vino. No more wine. Well, I, there's remember no after, point now. It tastes really. like water. Remember? What? So what the doc? I picture a bunch of doctors standing around him, you know, with pens and pencils. So you can't taste anymore, huh? I do occasionally. Uh, like I drink in a in a big drinking year, maybe two bottles of wine a oh, year. Whoa, whoa! <laughs> slow okay, down. we do need to talk. That, that would be in a big year. We yeah. do. And I've told you guys, I've never had a mixed drink. Yeah, I don't believe I ever have. Um, I, I will say this: at least I was, since I've been married, I've never. When had. I was in college, I would have mixed drinks now and then, but to be honest, never liked the taste. Really? There's not one mixed drink that I think, oh, this is good. This tastes really good. I'm going to drink this. Tiger's an Dude, expert on mixed drinks. Mixologist. He is a mixologist. He is. He used to be a bartender. L Limoncello is a mixed drink. But did I really like the flavor? Yeah, I actually, in, in uh, Italy, I did. You like the different types. I like the different types. The pistachio and, and the cream. Creamy limoncello. Yeah. yeah that I like. Drink. Yeah. And I planted a tree just for you because I planted some of those italian lemons so that i can bring them in and you can make your limoncello how about a good friend lance walheim who has his uh, is it the gin right oh i get so i brought it in right and showed you right. guys okay but it is super funny because when you do mix that gin with tonic water his it, gin yeah it clouds it really clouds up hmm. it's really interesting we should have him on again yeah. in 2023 yeah we should so what's happening on Facebook? What are your New Year's resolutions? What would you like to see us do this year? Maybe you have some oh. show ideas. Now, we are going to be broadcasting Things live talk about. from the Library of Congress at John's house yeah. in the upcoming year. Well, that's going to be a show about books, right? Yep. Show about that's books. That's what we plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're going to go outside, though, in, in another remote from your house. Yeah, I think when maybe things warm up. going in the spring when the roses start blooming, maybe. Right? People like that. Yeah. Get out of the studio. We could do a rose pruning video maybe prior. Yeah. We talked about doing that in studio, right? Coming in studio or not? No. For the no. rose pruning video? You want to do that outside your house? Yeah. I think so. Okay. And then we'll hit the nursery this year at least once. Yep. Yeah, we'll hit the nursery. Try to get another nursery out there too. Well, and Tiger's um, thinking of having the rose auction this November yeah. at his nursery. That'd be God. good, right? Would you? Could you accommodate that? Yeah, easily. Really? Yeah. Let's put up a tent for it. Yeah, put up a tent, have it out there. I mean, we, we clear the area for Christmas trees already. And then you can have a special, like, sale going on during the rose auction. Yeah. Hey, don't forget, before you leave, we've got uh, azaleas on, Everybody has on to sale. Everybody has to buy a plant. Got to buy a plant. <laughs> By the way, our listeners uh, – uh, Frequently, no more than we do. Yeah, absolutely. Always. And uh, just always. for the details, uh, John 
pointed out that uh, Carl Char- Chapek wrote The Gardener's Year was uh-huh. the name of the book in 1929. 1929. Yeah. That's that's when the stock market crashed. Uh-oh. 1929. It's the they beginning really of needed, the Great Depression. They mm-hmm. really needed that Gardener's What was so year. great about was it? A, <laughs> was it a... Was it a it's like, fictional book? go. It was pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> What's that again? Was the Gardener's Year a fiction book? Was it a like a? a there were no robots in the Gardener's Year, but was it was it, actually a gardening book. It was a gardening yeah. book, and I do have a copy in our library that Ooh. we can look at when so we do from 1929. So have those books pre-pulled before we get there. No, we have to go up there on the little ladder and do this, and, and like I'll yeah. push you. I'll push you okay. as it goes. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Brian, you can go through and look for. Books that seem interesting to you. Like that have pictures? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you have Dick this, and Jane? This, the revised edition? Do you have a children's section in your gardening? In you your sure gardening don't. I do have a uh, fantasy section, though. Easy. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Easy, Tiger. That's... Not not you, Tiger, but him. Yeah. Easy, yeah. boy. Oh, no. Um, do you have special reading lights in your library? That help you read books better, John. I don't, but I, for Christmas, Shannon bought me a desk chair. Ooh! Oh, I bet it's a nice one. I it's a so lazy too. boy desk chair. Oh, yeah. that sounds good. I have to be careful though, because when you, I, I mean, it moves across the uh, tile so quickly <laughs> that I out. could sit in it and be. Oh, uh, that sounds fun. To the wall. When we get there, we're going to spin you around. We're yeah. going to push you all over the house. Hey, uh, Tim, my good buddy Tim says, New Year's resolution, try to use less water, capture more, and cuddle. Oh, all right. Capture more and cuddle. Yeah. And now, wait got a, a second. That's not a different sentence. It's a, <laughs> he's going to use less water. And then capture and cuddle. And then capture and cuddle. <laughs> cuddle? <laughs> I don't know about I didn't that. S- I didn't see an apostrophe. There's laws yeah. against that. Yeah. Yeah, Tim, be careful. How about <laughs> Rick, John? Landscape is backyard bank with ornamental grasses. Ooh. What kind kinds would grow well in my area? You know what? There's uh, Rick. You can probably get a used copy online cheap. But John Greenley wrote a book called "The Encyclopedia of Ornamental Grasses," which I have in the library, and and that would be good. You know, I my daughter uh, Rick lives in Star, Idaho. My daughter lives in Meridian, so they're not far from each other. And I notice uh, they use a lot of grasses in Idaho. Do they? But they're the deciduous type um, that uh, go completely dormant. So they're grown just for the some spectacular seed, seed heads, right. and they're not the kind that we would use down here. So get get his book. And do they um, cut them back, or do they just do they go dormant and then they come back? From they what cut I've themselves s- back. From what I've seen is that they leave them during the winter and then. They go to the ground in the spring. Okay, yeah. But it depends on the type too. Right, because yeah, some of them they just leave and then they kind of cut back themselves. Because here, regrow. even our evergreen ones, we cut back sometimes, right? Oh, they look so much prettier when you yeah, do. Yeah, like the Penicetum rubrum. Mm-hmm. If you cut those back every spring. Yep. Hmm. Yeah. So there you go, Rick. Um, because I think and, they use a lot of miscanthus up there. And then the other, if he's um, putting it on a slope too, the cool thing about a slope is it's already kind of tilting your landscape on the side. For right. drainage? So you can put shorter grasses around, and you can still see them. Where one of the problems in a in a flat landscape, when you put grasses in their shorter ones, yeah. they get tucked behind plants or they can't be seen. So, you know, it's on a slope. That's really good. Speaking of things that can't be seen, did you ever find your Watsonia? No. <laughs> Not yet. Would you lose it someplace in the garden? Yes. <laughs> he forgot where he planted it. Yeah, and it hasn't bloomed yet, so or it's not growing, or at least I can't see if it's growing. I have California poppies growing back though. Are those the ones you that your son they were spread earlier this year? I huh? I was thinking they were earlier. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Because I I don't have them blooming. I don't. No, think. no, nothing but big, blooming. But big plants like this. Yep. Yeah. Too bad the camera wasn't on you when you gave that analogy, John. Or, oh wait, it what? There you go. Yes, yes. You were on camera yeah. when yeah. you. Yeah. When you showed people how how tall it was, was that it? Yeah. Right from my bottom hand. Though. From your bottom to hand. To the top. Hand. Okay. <laughs> with with that in mind, we're going to take a break. Uh, those on Facebook Live, questions, comments, what's happening, New Year's resolutions, whatever. Thanking those on uh, Biz Talk Radio for tuning in, of course, and a big thank you to Stephanie. So with that in mind, we're going to take a break. Back after these messages, our great sponsors on Biz Talk Radio. Stay with us.
Welcome back to the show. Those on BizTalk Radio, those on Facebook Live, we appreciate you tuning in this morning. Tanya overslept, but hey, that's okay. Happy New Year, Tanya. We're only about uh, 15, 20 minutes into the show, so the best part is still to come. The, the, the word of the day is Watsonia. <laughs> Where, instead of Where's Waldo? You find the Watsonia. Where's Watsonia? Yeah. Named after Watson, I presume. My dear. <laughs> hey. My dear Watson. Um, the Encyclopedia of Ornamental Grasses, uh, subtitled How to Grow and Use Over 250 Beautiful and Versatile Plants. Uh, you can buy at Thrift Books a hardbound copy for four dollars and nine cents mm. how about that that's, that's a great deal that's a great deal under yeah. five dollars the only thing is uh the condition says acceptable <laughs> as long as you can read it inside. Yeah, so what kind of condition fine. is it in it's acceptable i mean you know it's a book what, what do you want i guess there's paper there's pages and words. And there's words on it <laughs> and i'm sure there's many other books out there it's just you know we've had john greenlee on our show before and yeah he's Really good when and it comes he was, to Yeah, he was well known for, for Here, that. Here's one for both of you, maybe, maybe even you, Tiger, because oh. of your landscaping expertise. Do you know of an organization that advocates for preserving grown trees in urban areas? About to do a battle with the HOA over removal of 60-foot tall pines in our development. Was this San Diego? Yes. Yeah. So there is um, – the city actually has a – my my dad was on the um, panel for a long time where there's a to urban, preserve trees where there's an urban tree um, I don't know what you would call it committee that the city has that's made up of arborists professionals community members and things like that so if it is something you just can search city of San Diego urban tree committee and the new the new committee members would be on there, and you can reach out to one of them if it's something about preserving it. But what's the? I'd like to know the motivation. An, if it's in an HOA, a lot of time that's outside of city. Yeah, that's what I reach. was thinking. Is because they if have their it's own on private property. CC and ours, they yeah, have their yeah. own yeah. private property. But I'd like to know uh, what their motivation is for taking them out. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, I mean, it's like your house where it's maybe foundational road work. Do you just remember? Damaging. They have to be worried In fact, about it was there when you came to our wedding, John, right outside our house, a probably a hundred foot eucalyptus tree, right. yeah. which they eventually took out. Right. But it was so close to the to the uh, unit, you know. I'm yeah. sure there was a root problem. It was messy. Yeah, no, that's why they take it out. Yeah. but that, I, I, but I, but I understand the motivation behind that. Yeah. Now, in New Ze in New Zealand, if you plant a kauri tree and it's in the ground longer than five years, it's illegal to remove it. Oh, really? Because it's established. Yeah. Well, kauri trees are protected, and uh, and they encourage planting more. But yeah. once they're planted, you own it. I can understand, too, in an HOA, if they've planted trees that are just messy, they just drop whatever it is, get smashed on the sidewalk. Well, pine trees berries, are always dropping needles. Yeah. Pines and needles and that kind of thing. I put pine mulch around, uh, pine needle mulch, around a lot of things yeah. yesterday. So, yeah, in terms of a private property, I don't think there's a lot that yeah. they can do, though. I think it just really comes down to Cause the, the HOA, HOA right. deciding. Um, well, just find they, out, yeah, find out why they want to remove them. Yeah, but I do, I will say the city does implement a, uh, also a mandate where um, if it's in the city of San Diego, they can make them replace that tree. So if they do remove it, they have to put in a new tree, right? And that tree is usually something from one of their approved lists. So then, hopefully, it can stay there forever in the future, because maybe that original tree was not part of that approved list. I wonder who it was in the cities uh, around Southern California who thought it was a great idea to plant ficus, <laughs> you know, in a yeah. long walkways. Yeah, it was the zoo. It was the San Diego Zoo. <laughs> they, they were like, "We need more food." Let's put some ficus trees. You just see huge. I mean, they're breaking up the right. concrete in all kinds of areas. Now, you had a huge ficus tree in your old house yeah. in the backyard. I had. 30 years, you said. I th wasn't it 30-year growth? Yeah, and actually the one that was right behind the patio I, I removed. Mm -hmm. But those came from six-inch pots. Wow. I I had a six-inch house plant. And yeah. 
you know how they put like five or six cuttings in there, and of course I separated each one. <laughs> of course you put did. them in a different pot. You made that one dollar and fifty cent house plant go go for John. I right? had the ficus Maximum. experiment outside my door. The one day I went to move the pot, pot's not moving. Oh, roots in ground grow through pot in <laughs> into the ground. One inch root. Yeah. I was thinking the other day I had uh, what was the the um, ficus that was the house plant of the year last year. Uh, not was not the decora. Umbellata. Was it uh, ficus that, umbellata? That the umbrella sounds fig. Familiar, yeah. Um, I was thinking, do I plant this on the hill or should I give it to Brian? I'm not sure. Well, how big is it right now? It's only like no, it was a little one. Remember, he got it. Yeah, he yeah. brought it in. Camera. Oh, that yeah. About about two feet now. Yeah. I don't. I'm, you know what? I hate to say this. I'm out of room. Oh no! I think you'd like this. Oh, you ought to see. Speaking of things, last week uh, the um, bird's nest. Yeah. Your Transplanted it when I got home. Uh huh. We had the nice rain. It's stretching right now. It yeah. Looks, it, it, just in a happy. week, it looks good. Yeah. You can just kind of see. It's like I got some room now. I have some good it was, rain. Uh, bird's nest. And bird's then it, nest. It, Leslie. It yes. Was, it was, Leslie. There was the name at the end of it. Leslie. Yes, yeah. Bird's Nest Leslie. Yeah, with the curly li- the yep. fringe on the tip. Of I'll the take leaves. a picture for next week. Yeah. Bring it in. Because it's like, you know, um, so I, I gave this to you. How's it doing? Oh, it's doing okay. Do you have pictures? I, I'd, like to, I'd like to see how it's doing. Can, can you prove it's doing okay? Yeah, proof, proof of life, please. Right. Proof Is there dirt life. in the pot? Yeah, there's dirt in the pot. Uh, did you want to answer Rick's question about love grass? Love grass. Not the stuff you smoked in the 60s, John. That's something else. Mm. But Rick wants to know if we've heard of love grass. Well, what's the genus? Yeah, what is the genus? I'm looking it up. Okay, here we go. Go to Dana. John, no more plants. Eragrostis is a large and widespread genus of plants in the grass family. I've seen that up there. I don't really think anything about it <laughs> I, I think that the I better don't have a lot of experience with the it, better question is rick is what do you think about it uh, yeah. it says it's good for holding slopes and stuff and i think yeah that's maybe it would be rick good for rick is asking about it yeah i would try it it's got a good name love grass you know, that's the thing about gardeners if you're not sure try it yeah if, you can always dig it out if they say it, it doesn't grow in your zone who cares try it we've done that Oh, I it, do that all the time. He does. It does say it's a Native American wildflower grass, which means it's probably going to reseed. But I do see quite a few nurseries that have varieties, which maybe they um, maybe are a bit more controlled. Then, yeah, looks pretty. Try the love grass, Rick. Yeah. I uh, was telling Tiger before the show that I bought. Six avocado trees yesterday. You did online, and your property used to be avocado trees. Yeah, he's it trying did. To go back. He's Isn't trying to that go funny? Back. Yes. That we went through and pulled out oh, every yeah. avocado yes. tree. Yeah. Now I'm going to plant six more, and I started thinking: Should I? Do I really want to plant six? Maybe I want to plant two or three and then graft other varieties onto them. Oh. But, but I don't know. One I got was the uh, queen avocado which I'm really interested in for the I, flavor. I'm interested in trying them as well. So I'm excited. What do you what are they going to sell them to you in like those uh tube sleeve? Yeah, uh, they'll be small to start with, but you yeah. know avocados grow fast. Yeah. And one one uh, I mentioned to you might have been a scam. <laughs> it was, <a laughs> it was Avozilla. Avozilla. And supposedly it's come from Australia and it they they purported it's a cross between a watermelon and an avocado. They purported it's to square. be an extra large avocado, but if you look up some of the pictures, it'll show a woman uh, showing uh, holding attacked. a Haas avocado next to the avozilla, and the avozilla is like three times the size. But if you look at where her hands are held, one is, the one with the avozilla is forward, and the one oh. with the the Haas is, is a, l- back. a little trick to the camera. Yeah, camera trick. Yeah. But it still sounds interesting, so I'm going to try it. And yeah, then, why not? Yeah, and then there was one called Marcus Pumpkin, which is a variety that they grow in Florida. I've never seen it here in California. 
And it probably likes humidity. And the seed of the uh, avocado weighs the same amount as a haas. Get out of here. Just the seed. But don't you think it would want humidity if it's in Florida? I don't know. It's one of, I think it's a cross between a Guatemalan and a West Indian avocado. And it's supposed to have kind of a custardy uh, texture to the fruit, almost like a, um, a zapote tiger. Uh huh. So it's, it might be more of a dessert avocado. We're going to take a break on that note. I'm looking at these Avozilla pictures right now. <laughs> Those on Biz Talk Radio. One more segment coming up in your hour number one. Then you've got news coming up top of the hour. The rest of us on Facebook, we're going to keep on cruising. Thank you for joining us. Happy New Year. Welcome to our New Year extravaganza, New Year's Day extravaganza, which is tomorrow. This is the New Year's Eve Day extravaganza with Garden America. All right, we are back. Uh, final segment for our number one, those of you on BizTalk Radio. Those on Facebook Live, keep the questions, the comments coming as we talk about maybe the remains of 2022 heading into 2023. Tiger, a garden New Year's resolution for you. Not at the nursery, but your backyard. So we're going to be building an ADU in my backyard this year. So I have a lot to do in the sense of there's a whole, from front to backyard, there's a whole section of my yard that's going to have to have a trench ran through it to run sewer who's gonna dig that trench oh people (laughs) you got people i I got got people people. i got trench people right people but i mean no matter what it's a big trench and i've already got so i've i asked you guys before those queen palms i'm gonna pull out those queen palms when we put in this trench because that's where they're gonna go Mm -hmm. so i'm waiting on that and then um that whole hillside slopey area is gonna have to be replanted after i do the trench so i'm not doing anything until that trench happens and then behind the adu is going to be a little garden and i have an avocado tree there already um and i'm going to plant that out so um you may want to graft your avocado (laughs) with with, a bunch of the the ones that i'm going to have exactly i'm looking at these avozilla pictures and they're hilarious i love them are they real pictures though what what do you guys think we'll find out from john one of them is definitely enhanced yeah do all avocado trees have, have uh, shallow root systems? Pretty much. Yeah. None of them have tap roots that I'm aware of. Well, don't trip over those, John. And all of them are pretty sensitive to our you know, watering and things here. So. Yeah, Lisa wants to know if – she says she has uh, an apple tree that's on its way out from Fire Blight. Oh. I, I'm trying to think. Uh, have you ever seen Fire Blight on an apple? I know pears. Pears. And they're and, in the same family. But yeah. but anyway, she wants to know if she can plant an avocado in the same place. And I don't believe avocados are affected by fire blight, but it is important that you have good drainage mm-hmm. because yeah. otherwise you're going to get root rot. Now, we right. do know you can have avocados ripen in a paper bag with an apple. <laughs> yes. Is that a do. stretch? <laughs> but, <laughs> from fire blight to ripening <laughs> them in bags, yes. But – um. That's yeah, just, I don't. I, I, I don't, follow your train of thought. Thank you, John. Yeah. I don't think avocados are affected by fire blight as well because I mean, right? You know, they we have them all through Fallbrook, and right, that would be very bad. Right, you know, those trees would go so quick. There'd be an outbreak, wouldn't yeah. it? It'd be like a its own little COVID virus. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, root so, rot's the main problem. But uh-huh. are today's avocados grafted on uh, root rot resistant? I, uh, rootstocks? I believe so. Um, or phytophthora you know, resistant? They are much more, yeah, grown towards, you know, wherever region. And like you say, they're kind of like the roses. They they match the rootstock to wherever you're buying it. So that is the one thing you do have to be careful of if you are John and ordering them online is what rootstock are they growing them on? I feel like Dana's yelling at me. <laughs> is it all caps? It's all caps. No yeah. more plants. Two exclamation points. You could feel it. You could feel the emotion yeah. in her voice. Yeah, did you right see the, the, uh, but she says if Brian gets more plants, she's going to get more toys for the cats. Oh. oh gosh, it's, I just, don't... it's just they're, the toys are everywhere. Really? What do they everywhere. Need? What do they need? What toys? You know, little bells and little wand things, you know. And uh, then the laser light's fine. I love the laser light. Well, And that's why Bandit cuts you up. Is because you play with him with the laser light. And he and can he, never get it. And he hates you. He has a deep, deep anger issue for you. 
he's just that, his first year of life was kind of messed up before he adopted every him. year during the rose auction he's like yeah. i'm gonna remind brian of who, <laughs> I, who i am and who he is and who runs this house exactly carla says that she thinks she knows dana's new year's resolution <laughs> <laughs> you know what dana likes the plants in fact we can't wait till our citrus they've all turned you know a nice deep orange but yeah. they're still hard they're hey, not ready yet hey dana, the cuties if you're, if you're listening we need to have Brian take a vacation and you stick back, and then we'll go in there and just replace all of his um, patio with, like, dead plants. Just replace everything, right, <laughs> when, when I'm gone? When he goes back, and then when you show back up, just everything will be dead on your patio. Susan just texted this did, picture Did you see me. that picture? That's Ooh, John in France, right? Yeah. yeah. She yeah. sent it to you also. Yeah, huh? I've got it too, yeah. Nice. She's got yeah, to stop the, and smell the roses. At the uh, Rosary Val du Mont. That was fun. Is that the place? You didn't go to that. Wasn't I, where was the place we went to in France? Did you go? The factory where they, they say, okay, see all these roses here? Let's go to the back. You see that huge pile? Those are all the ones that didn't make it. Oh, no, no. That wasn't the factory. It was, factory. <laughs> it was the May- rose May- factory. The rose Nursery. factory. Robots we went to a from. rose factory, Tiger. They had robots running the rose So where, shop. where was that, though? That one, John? That was Mayon in that the was south Mayon. of France. Okay. Yeah, this was outside of Paris, and you and Dana didn't go to Paris, as I recall. No, we took. I had to get back to work. You guys spent an extra, what, two or three days there? Yeah, I think it was an extra two nights in Paris. But anyway, this the place. It that was an adventure just to get to this place. I, that's, I know, right? We had to take take uh, subways and trains and buses. And <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> I know. There Public was a pile. There was a pile of roses back there. The ones that these just didn't make it. Yeah. What, like a hundred thousand roses, something ridiculous. At Mayon, yeah. And the pile was you know, bigger than the ceiling here. Mayon's one of the Gotta, most famous of all rose breeders. And, and they actually have a book written about the Mayon family, which is in the library. I still want to go to if a rose factory. If we were factory. in the library, we could. <laughs> I don't know what they would do in a rose factory. Maybe make perfume. Have these books pre-pulled. Okay. I'm not Little sure tag. what you're getting to with the pre-pull. Well, he just wants to be able to make sure when he's walking through there, he doesn't have no. to find it. So that when we're doing the show, the, you just go right there and don't spend 20 minutes Brian, looking for something. Brian never learned the Dewey <laughs> Decimal System, so therefore he can't find a book. Yeah, but I know what a dangling participle is. <laughs> doesn't help you be able to find a book. Dewey Decimal. Yeah. Wasn't it? Uh, wasn't that a Seinfeld bit with Kramer talking about how that was the biggest scam in the history of yeah. libraries yeah the the Dewey decimal, decimal system, system. <laughs> which they don't teach anymore i'm sure God, yeah i don't know why do they why? even have libraries yeah why would you yeah i guess they need libraries because where else would drag queens perform <laughs> where else where else do you go when it's hot outside i told <laughs> john before the show system. i told john i said john try to work in the work in the word drag queen today and that that was <laughs> his, and he did that was it huh you should have warned me, you know, this is the end of 2022. Just get it all out of your system. <laughs> get it out. <laughs> Re- release the filter, as they say. Oh. Hey, we're so oh. close to the break for uh, Biz Talk Radio. We are going to take a break right now to uh, end this segment, Hour 1, for our friends on Biz Talk Radio. Hopefully you're going to check back with us if your market carries Hour 2, John, six minutes after. Wow. And then we are back right here on Facebook Live. if it doesn't, Live. just go to Facebook and watch the rest of the show. Facebook Live. And those on Facebook and Live. And you can see my hand movements showing you how tall things are. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's a lot of fun on Facebook Live. Back after these messages and news on BizTalk Radio. Welcome back to Garden America. Hey, those uh, checking in on BizTalk Radio, thank you so much for that. This is our number two. No guest today. We are just kind of chit-chatting back and forth with our Facebook friends, questions, comments, and uh, various things that happened to us in 2022, New Year's resolutions and such in 2023. I have another resolution that I'm going to say publicly so you guys will hold me to it. 
All right. And it's to finish my book. Ooh. So. The Rose Factory, that book? <laughs> <laughs> no, the book on fairy roses. That's right. How far along are you? Um, I Three don't pages. like to divulge. <laughs> well, I, I, I say that because you, I want to know how much we have to pray. Well, the there's title. a lot of reasons. We're going to pray title. for him. There's a lot of research that goes into it. Here um, we go. I'm trying to compile a list of all the uh, polyantha roses, and I'm already at a, close to a thousand. And how far do you think you are? I, I, don't I like, think you have I'm, like a five more to go. Well, I'm doing them alphabetically, so I think I'm up to like T. Oh, oh you're, you're so more I'm, than halfway there. Yeah, I'm getting. And, and later in the alphabet, there's usually not as many names. No, there's not. There's yeah. very few. With it tails Z. off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 The, the old not a lot the of alphabet, U's. not a lot of X's. Tails right off there. So, uh, any uh, should we say just by the end of the you year? You know the rose Cecile Bruner, yeah. which is a polyantha. Mm -hmm. There's a uh, you. I don't know why this popped into my head, but you said not a lot of U's. There's a, a rose called uh, Ulrich Bruner. Bruner. Oh yeah. <laughs> and a Ulrich might be. Cecile's sister or brother, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Or Ulrich sister. is a, uh, I would assume it's a male name. Okay, so uh, here's the deal now. Since you've publicly stated that, <laughs> we've got already so people on Facebook. Book? Yeah, book? people have said, oh, here's Veronica. Yes, please finish that book, John. Okay. So so all into next year, people are going to say, how's the book coming along, John? Yeah. How you That's doing? What he needs. That's yeah, what he, he needs, needs encouragement. Push. It's one thing when people nag you to do something, <laughs> but now Veronica is begging me. <laughs> <laughs> and pleading with and, me. And when we're in the library doing the show, are we going to see it like on the typewriter with a stack of pages? I, instead of participating in the show, I'm going to be working on the book. <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing over there? He's working on his book. You guys yeah. can read it Leave over my shoulder. Okay, Paula says that our 30-year-old Satsuma tangerine seems to be dying. Yeah. She says, hope to save it gets two weeks water. Triple 15, twice, twice a year. Twice a year. Uh, I think it gets watered every two weeks is what she's saying, Probably. right? Yeah. Okay, so it's 30 yeah. years old. What does that tell you in terms of age and well, how you know, healthy it should be? We talked about how the, uh, originally there were three navel oranges brought from South America to Southern California. It's one up in L.A., right? And two of them are still alive. Yeah. So – Th those are over a hundred years old. Yeah. So, so but Paula's not thirty years, years is not. Terrible. But Paula's not taking care of those. <laughs> 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 and and just because they're alive doesn't mean they're producing uh, well. Right. Yeah. But it might have nothing to do with her. The watering she's she's doing fine because mm -hmm. commercially they water citrus every ten to fourteen days. Yeah. So that shouldn't be a problem. Um, one thing to do would be to check and see what the leaves look like. Uh, personally, I would, I would not use triple fifteen just because it's a chemical fertilizer. But citrus orchards have used triple fifteen Forever. for years. Uh, but uh, it depends what the soil's like. If you've got a uh, a clay soil that doesn't drain well, that that may be a problem. And but but check and see what the leaves look. If the leaves are not a dark green, that it could be a nutrient deficiency. If the the veins are green but the leaf is yellow, other than the veins, it's an iron deficiency. So you need uh, iron. What's that product called? The Ironite. No, the citrus growers mix or something. Citrus like growers that. blend. Citrus yep. growers blend has all the micronutrients that that citrus need. And um, a, a kind of a. a silent killer of citrus trees especially old ones because you can't really tell is scale um a, a lot of citrus trees get scale along the stems and the branches and they get so much scale that sometimes they don't even know <laughs> that it's that it's scale on the branches oh, and that's stems true. yeah and because people, there's so many but just it looks, they run it, together it, it looks like it's the trunk it 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 is just covered with scale and it looks like it's the trunk of the tree or the branch and, um, you know, so treating they suck the life right out of the yeah, tree. Yeah, literally, do. right? And an old tree like that is something that could be affected by that. So scale might be also. So check your tree for scale. Kind of. Sometimes it's kind of hard to see that because it's right along the, 
the stems and trunks. Yeah, and there are other insects too. The uh, citrus leaf miner mm -hmm. can be really bad and affect the trees. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you yeah, know what? Go to your local leaf miner and white fly. Usually, you can tell. Yeah. If you have those problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If the leaves coming out, the new leaves coming out are all curled and twisted, that's an insect problem. It might just be aphids, though, but still, it affects the ability of the tree to photosynthesize. Which could affect the overall health. Yeah. Veronica's planning uh, her garden for the spring, and she wants to know some great new plants that can go vertical. Vertical. I think she's talking about edibles because she says cucumbers, melons, etc. cetera. Mm. Well, beans is one, and the best bean for eating, as far as I'm concerned, are Romano beans. And uh, if you, during the summer, pick Romano beans and boil them up with potatoes and put a little uh, olive oil over them. You know, you put olive oil in everything. <laughs> olive oil is good for I you. I don't blame yeah. you. Yeah. The extra virgin, right? <laughs> That's the, do you know, the extra virgin is the kind you use for eating. The other olive oil is best for cooking. Cooking. You know, like frying and stuff like that, but for how do you, how flavor. How do you get extra virgin? I mean, isn't it? Because Virgin? it's just a little extra yeah. of it. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, well, Paula says tree is in an established grove. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, vertical vegetable. So, so I I don't they don't grow always that well, but you know John mentioned beans. But if you do have a little like uh, TP something for it to grow on those little gherkin. Those little gherkin melons are fun. Oh, the mouse too. melons. Mouse melons. Yeah. So you can grow those because they're just like a bean where they grow up, but they just hang off little, you know, yeah. little little bits of it. You don't need a giant structure. You don't mouse need melons are like little cucumbers, right? <laughs> they, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mouse melon. So yeah. those are fun because they're fun to put in things. You know, you can put them in salads. You can right. put them in drinks. You can put them in different meals and plates. And it's kind of like when you get the miniature carrots. <laughs> or or corn, yeah. miniature corn in different salads and things. Sue wants what? to know what to use for citrus scale. Um, ooh, Sue, two oil. two trains of thought on that. Um, yeah, one, uh, like a oil, like a horticultural oil, uh, insecticidal oil, uh, soap, um, you know, things like that. But not soap. Um, no, not soap. You said soap. Okay, yeah. Um. But also, you know, with the citrus, a lot of times it's such so if it gets so bad, it's kind of hard to see the trunk. The um, Bayer um, or not called Bayer Bio Advance Citrus and Tree Systemic. Right. We'll work on that as well. So good luck. Well, good luck on that. I, I had a citrus tree when so we bought our home five years ago and I had a citrus tree completely infected with scale, completely infected with a lot of things. I did a lot of lacing, a lot of trimming, a lot of pruning, a lot of treatments. And it's taken two years of applying because that bio advanced citrus one is only supposed to work for three months or something. Not like the tree and shrub, mm -hmm. which it has like a full year. Mm -hmm. um, in five years, I applied it three times that citrus at bio advanced one. And I would say I'm just now seeing it get under control because it was so bad. So it might take mul multiple treatments if you do have that problem. Uh, Veronica was asking about new new plants for climbing. Yeah. But one that's not climbing that we were talking about prior to the show was the Chinese wolf flower. Mm. Yeah. Um, that looks interesting. Yeah. It's, it was in the newsletter. And if you don't get the newsletter, uh, you can Google Chinese wolf flower. Or you can also go to our website and sign up for the newsletter. I was going to say, Jeff, if you don't get the newsletter, Google. Yeah. No, you go to our website, GardenAmerica.com. Right, but you won't see the Chinese up. wolf flower. But you can sign up for the newsletter. Right. And, and please visit our website once a, <laughs> di once a day if possible. Bless you, Tiger. Gazoon height, Tiger. Sorry. Or as I like to say, cut it out. <laughs> Stop it. Oh, all right. So anyway, the Chinese wolf flower mm -hmm. is a type of celosia uh, that... I think Jer Gettle from Baker Creek was responsible for for reintroducing into the United States. We're going to take a break. I oh, waited until you God. got to what I, I thought was a period. Talk about this. We're going to talk about this. We're going to hold right. you to it, just like your book. So do stay with us. Tiger's bored already. We're going to take a break. 
For those on BizTalk Radio, Facebook Live, I'm Brian Main, John Begnasco, Tiger Palafox here on Garden America. Happy New Year to you. Okay, we are back from that fantastic break on BizTalk Radio, a lot shorter here on Facebook Live. Thank you for tuning in. The questions, the comments keep on coming. We are into hour number two if you're listening on BizTalk Radio. Thank you for that. And again, John, we uh, want you to continue your story about the Chinese wolf. Wool. Not wolf. Wool. Wool. Wool flower. Wool. Like wool. sheep's wool. Yeah, not, not like sheep and wolf's clothing. Not that. Right. Ooh. Like, will you come Good over? Words. I will. <laughs> <laughs> I will if you invite me. Um, but anyway, it's a Celosia. And, I like and they're that in the amaranth family, Shibles. right? Mm -hmm. And amaranth uh, produces some edible grains. But the the leaves of this Celosia are delicious. And they look really cool. Deliciosa. Deliciosa. Celosia. I like that word. You know, the <laughs> Deliciosa is Monstera, right? Right, right. And your mother has a picture in the newsletter yeah. this week. She got a new Monstera, right. Monstera Peru. Yeah, a pretty one, huh? Yeah, yeah. that's nice. I like that one. Yeah. Say Celosia again. Celosia. <laughs> Celosia. Oh, I love that. Celosia. Delicious. You can say Celosia. That's even Celosia. better. Yeah, I like that. You like Celosia? <laughs> <laughs> I do like that. What about Celosia? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ew, Keep going. Whatever. All right. Lisa wants to know where scale comes from. It's like they just appear yeah. out of nowhere. Well, that's spontaneous Very generation, right? Yes. <laughs> that some insects reproduce that way. <laughs> uh. um, has nothing to do with the Department of Weights and Measures, right? No. Nor fish <laughs> right. or dragon. The scale can be moved from ants. As a matter of yeah, fact, if they, you have ants. You can see them moving up and down. Yeah, yeah. if you have ants on your citrus, uh, we should have mentioned that that's side. almost a, a for sure a sign that you've got uh, insects on the tree. And it's either white fly aphids or scale yeah. or all three. So yeah. that's ants the main aren't thing. Going, everybody thinks ants are going for the citrus. Like, like uh, these ants yeah. are like, oh, there's an orange tree here. I'm going to go eat some oranges. Yeah. Like, no, no. They no. don't eat oranges. Yeah. Hey, Paula says great newsletter. And oh, it's all John right It's there. all John. You, and that's Paula. why I urge people to go to our website for a lot of reasons. Sign up for the newsletter. Great articles, pictures, yeah. and you, you should learn a lot. You should. You know, hey, we do. One, one newsletter is worth six months of you study know, and gardening. I yeah. was going to tell you for the new year, you and Tiger should be contributing articles to the news Let's do it you know what you mentioned wait. that a couple of years ago i want yeah. to and you didn't like my rough draft when tiger <laughs> first tiger well it was too rough yeah I tried to, to be a little more gentle you didn't I like, like the plants. way i drew <laughs> i like plants i like plants by brian main when dirt <laughs> water <laughs> fertilizer see, see plants grow <laughs> see plants see water plants, plants. Wait, see wait, plants no grow. in your in yours you wouldn't say dirt because you don't think dirt that it's needed soil you don't think we don't need needed. dirt. You need soil. Yours, yours would just be plants, water. Grow. You know, it's funny now. As I, as I walk down my the the walkway and I see all these plants I have lined up, I'm like, who needs topping off? I got some yeah. soil. Who needs to be topped off? Oh, by the way, the chocolate maple. Yeah. Hibiscus. Maple sugar. Maple sugar <laughs> starting to see bloom. Oh. Starting, but but you're right. They They're match camouflage. The foliage. They, match they, the foliage. they match it, but yeah. must be about four or five. Nice. So. All right. I'll get a picture of that you, one when they come to fruition. You have to write an article on the maple sugar hibiscus. I'm going to plagiarize. <laughs> <laughs> you can't you just can start off paste. with that. I do it yeah. all the time. Okay. Because all we are is contributing yeah. as long as you give credit to yeah. where the source came from. You know, if you go to Wikipedia, you don't have to give credit. You nice. can just take whatever you want. Yeah, that's what I like. I'm going to write an article on... Should I write an article on? I think I will write one on. I'll, I'll research the that hibiscus. Hopefully, yeah. we'll be doing a series of videos this coming year about uh, oh, yeah. everything that we're Tiger's going to come up with to do around our house. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be just a video of me Tiger's going to come John's up with house. that we're all going to do around our house. Yeah. What does our that house. mean? 
He's going to be doing Being helping me with the landscaping. Landscape. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, maybe he can help. When you guys are over, I'll, I have a book on um, on not gardens and parterres. And uh, I already have the— are parterres those troughs that they used to put in the garden? What's a parterre? A parterre is uh, like a not garden, except there's no knots. <laughs> they're, uh, <laughs> they're geometrical <laughs> shapes of hedges. Okay. And— Sometimes there'll be things planted within those shapes. Wow. You, you know, like you might have a little triangle and then. I'm, I'm just planted. glad that I'm going to be helping John with initially installing all this oh, stuff. Oh, I think it goes further than initial. Well, that's what I'm saying because a lot of the things he's talking about, that's like a lifetime of trimming, plant, planning. You know, it's, it's not just, oh, plant it and let it go. So it's I, I know what Tiger's training. thinking. This is a lifetime yeah. of doing this, but it's much easier for me. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> my lifetime's going to be a lot shorter yeah. than his. He, he's he's only going to see one twist in maybe his knot. Yeah, right, right, one, exactly. One, one twist in your knot. Yeah, of his knot. We well, have to started. decide what kind of plants to put in, but it's an eighteen by eighteen area. Uh, do you think that's big enough? Yeah, I think so. I. I'm limited by the cliff. <laughs> yeah. Can't go over the cliff. And uh, from where the, you know, the level where the house is. Yes. If you go out the back patio to look down the hill, you'll be looking onto the knot garden. And uh, we just built a arbor for roses. Then comes the knot garden, which is laid out now. And then we're going to put up another arbor. You should have your own YouTube channel. Well, th hopefully these will be make some YouTube videos. Yeah, well, that, that's just, that's interesting. He's going to live stream his house exactly, and and little um, time lapse. It's going to be video. like big, that show Big Brother, and it's just going to be John walking around the backyard. Hey, uh, John, <laughs> Michelle would like you to quickly talk about hydrangeas and the different types, which I know that's uh, your wife's favorite flower, right? Yeah. Hydrangeas. It is. There's a lot of different types. Yeah, uh, a lot of where's colors. She, where's Michelle at? Does it say Michelle? Where are you from? Because that's a big variable when it comes to hydrangeas, too, because hydrangeas to us mean different things to hydrangeas on the East right. Coast. Right. We usually grow the mop heads yeah. here. Yeah. Do they, which they, do they don't grow them gr on the East Coast at they all? They do. They grow them all over, and they actually the blue uh, flowers do better uh, where the soils are more acid. Okay. So you're more likely to but, see blue on the East Coast. But we don't get, the, we don't get many of the deciduous hydrangeas here. There's a, there's All the hydrangeas. I mean, uh, are, I mean the, the the woody ones, the the more woody ones. You mean like the paniculata grandiflorus? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the yeah. trees. And, now we usually don't plant those, but you know, there's the oak leaf hydrangeas, mm -hmm. there's climbing hydrangeas, uh, hydrangea arborescens. The oak leaf is quercifolia, and um, yeah. Uh, but there's a lot of different varieties of mop heads because right. in the mop heads you've got um uh the lace lace caps lace caps which and have they have these new ones with like little button curly leaf flowers on it too yeah yeah and the doubles there's my favorite one right now is um is the i think it's princess diana oh yeah yeah so I think you brought that one in or something did that one sounds familiar I feel it does like, sound familiar i feel doesn't like it? you mentioned that one recently like did you plant one you i have, have one, one. And uh, when Greg Lowry was over at my house, I, he used to grow hydrangeas commercially. We're going to take a break. So I gave him a cutting. <laughs> Attaboy. <laughs> Snuck that in. All right. Facebook Live, Biz Talk Radio. Break coming up. We have two more segments. Do stay with us on our New Year's show for 2022 into 2023 here on Garden America. We are back. Welcome. In studio, New Year's Eve, 2022 into 23. I'm Brian Main, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox. We've got a lot of good ideas on uh, Facebook Live as far as upcoming shows. Veronica states a refresher course on the care and feeding of roses and or avocados would be good. Or rhododendrons. Who, who was it that asked about hydrangeas again? That was... was um 
Michelle. 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 Yeah. So, Michelle, John brought in that Princess Diana mop head hydrangea not too long ago. And he showed it to us when he came in studio and said, what is this? And Brian and I, nor I oh, that's right. I no thought idea. it was a hydrangea at all. It did not look like a hydrangea initially. Um, that is a cool one. If, if you can find that one, yeah. definitely grow that one. Pink flower, fringy. The foliage is can smaller. You find, can you find that and post the picture maybe? Okay. Real quick, an I image. I, um, the foliage is – so a lot of times hydrangea foliage is big. You know, that foliage, though, was small. And then the the flower was very frilly, very fringy also. It's kind yeah, of neat. But it was in a container, so it's, it's hard to tell. In the ground, you know, they might have larger leaves. Yeah. Who knows? It's cool. I liked it. Yeah. That's a good one. I need uh, – when you come over, we've got to find an area for hydrangeas. Right. Well, I think you're, you're going to have to plant some trees, you know, because you have uh, that one side of the yard that gets cooler, shadier, that kind of right. environment. There's a lot of trees there that need, need a home. Yeah, exactly. Because You can lay it out, and, and we'll just get them planted. First, we need drainage and irrigation. <laughs> you need to bring your trench guys over, Tiger. Yeah. Princess Diana Hydrange. I'm going to pull. Okay, so Carla uh, said that she got a Conaho from her thoughtful family. Ooh. I was using mine yesterday. Good tool. Yep. I got mine for my birthday from my daughter, Gina. And uh, it's gotten a lot of use. I like having a couple acres to work on because I never run out of weeds to pull. <laughs> <laughs> it would what be is like Alexander the Great just looking over the garden and crying because they have no more weeds to pull. No more weeds to pull. What is your worst weed in your eyes? You know, right now, um, I, the worst is maybe – I have several worst, <laughs> which is impossible, but – I have several that would vie for the category of worst. Okay, one is tumbleweeds. Oh, you have a lot? Really? Yeah. And Wow. And uh, my son was raking up a bunch yesterday, and I, he said, oh, these come up really easy. And I go, yeah, and as you kick them over, they're throwing seeds everywhere. And then another one that I didn't think was going to be a problem, but I've been fighting with for the last year is castor beans. Mm. And then the the one this year that was not a problem in previous years, but I think because the ones I had, I let go to seed, and uh, I've already pulled out hundreds, are thistles. And do you have any of those at your house? They're the big green leaf thistles. They actually look kind of cool if it was one plant. No. But they're about this big. Flat, green, spinachy look. It's like spinach with thorns. Yeah. I, I get maybe one or two of those a year, but not very often, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and they got big, big tap thorns. roots, too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. They're tough to dig out. Yeah. Even a small plant is tough to dig out. Yeah. Um, so anyway, to answer your question. So those are your top pick, three pick the ones. nemesis. Yeah. Yeah. And then there there's a couple others in there, but right now they're – they're not that much of a problem. My mine is just Bermuda grass in general. I'm just trying to, and and I don't have a big of problem, but I also know it's one of those things like you have to control it and right away before it becomes a problem. I had a lot of weeds pop up this year in my pot. Really? Never had that problem before. Mm. Ton of them. It's that ocean I just assume birds dropping. No, it's that ocean forest. It's ocean forest, right? <laughs> <laughs> Carol from uh, Tucson uh, says that the uh, she's starting to have problems with with ants, ants, and she spelled it aunts, which <laughs> is because is, is it because she has aunts visiting? I think, problems. I think it's because the computer is auto correcting for her. And uh, Carolyn up in Newport Beach says, uh, "Did they bring the uncles?" <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the. Uh, if I ever have a problem, I just use the taro, either yeah. the ant granules or the ant powder. The the If I have, for instance, if you've got ants going up a tree, we told you you have an insect problem in the tree. In the tree. 
But the nice thing about the powder is you can just sprinkle it on the trunk and it'll stay there yep. unless it gets washed off. And and both of them are good for several months. Uh, with frequent frequent rain, you might have to reapply, but uh, just get the tarot granules. Yeah, uh, you can get them at your home improvement stores. You can buy them online, mm -hmm. yep. and they're they're not organic, but they're uh, synthesized from an organic compound, so uh, relatively safe. But give when, those a try, Carol. When I had uh, them in my house, I would use those little tarot bait stations. And right away, they instantly start going to those bait stations. And then I'd leave that bait station. I, I'd keep kind of replacing it whenever it got low. Um, and then after like about four days, all of a sudden, they just stopped coming. <laughs> <laughs> the word got out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, Paula mentions pokeweed as being a problem for her. I have a few pokeweed. Is that and nettle? No. What is pokeweed? No, pokeweed. Oh. Brian, you used to play that song, right? <laughs> Poke Salad Annie? Yes. Um, it was, uh, uh, well, Elvis did the cover. Tony Joe White. Tony Joe did White. Did the original. Uh. And then Elvis used to sing it in his concerts. Um, I'm surprised at how quickly pokeweed grows. But I don't have, I mean, if you don't pull it out, it's a huge problem. But um it doesn't, for me, it hasn't spread as fast as some of the other things, so I get a few here and there. Did you see I Tanya's comment? Or question, comment? Yeah, she wants to know yeah. if that's Deborah's calendar behind you. And it is. Yeah. Ah. Are you on 2023? I am. Really? I've moved ahead already. Even my desk calendar here and the other calendar. Uh, He's moving calendar. on. Yeah. Oh, moving yeah, I don't on. look back. Yeah. Looking back, in your mind this year is gone, right? Oh, I'm already into March. Yeah, planning right. St. Patrick's Day. Planning. Tanya Patrick's agreed with me on the tarot for for ants. Good. So Glad somebody agrees with you. Works well, here in San Diego. Really? Works up in San Jose. So Lisa says we should do a calendar. Which kind? we thought of it. We could do it. Daniel could help us do that. Yeah, I I thought of doing that before, but he's got to finish a book. Do first. people use calendars anymore? Decoration. You got to finish a book first. You got. That's right. Don't you start wandering. Yeah. Well, I actually had keep a your mind focused. Idea for a book yesterday that I told my wife about. She said, "Oh, that'd be a good idea, and it'd be easy to do." Yep. Do it. So I have to think about that. Gina wants to know if uh, anyone's starting seed and what they're starting Ooh. indoors. Well, I'll tell you, Seeds. we in the newsletter we start. We were just talking about the Chinese wolf wolf flower, right? Yeah. Well, not wolf. 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 <laughs> wolf. Flower. Wolf. Do you know the cardinal uh, wolf? that was the chancellor of England uh, during um, the reign of King Hen Henry VIII? Oh, yeah. The first one was Cardinal Wolsey. Ooh. And then there's Admiral Halsey. After Carl Wol Sergeant Wolsey Pepper? was Sir Thomas More. Both of them ended up... No, Sir Thomas More... Got his head cut off. Colonel Wolsey just died. I think he died in the tower. John London. the Baptist had the old head removal thing going too. Did, yeah. At a banquet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my goodness! It's Veronica says she loves calendars. Oh. I like calendars too, but more the more decorative. I think I think yeah. people now more for the picture. Oh, uh, by the way, there's a calendar. The American Rose Society puts out a calendar every year and I used to buy it every year to keep track of what I had to do. And then I started thinking, you know, I can do that on my phone. Mm -hmm. All right. So I stopped buying the calendar and of course I would never do it on my phone cuz We should we <laughs> should do an app that's a calendar that comes up with a picture. <coughs> right? Each month it's different. It yeah. changes. Just like a normal calendar, but you know, now when you open up your calendar on your phone, it just comes up to a calendar. Yeah. There's no pretty picture. No no creativity behind it. No. Exactly. Cindy says Oxalis is a major problem. Ooh. But oh, Oxalis, Oxalis can be a huge problem. But it's very easily treatable. That's the thing, right? Is when you when you when you're talking about weeds, um it, there's a difference between weeds that are difficult because they hurt to pull or or, or things weeds that are difficult to get rid of and then there's weeds that are rampant but at the same time easily controlled and with oxalis you can use pre-emergence and you can use herbicides pretty easily and then they 
there, there's nothing better than um, when you get like a big oxalis, like taking up a large area, and you pull one plant, and the whole whole everything oxalis comes, comes up. with it. Yeah. Oh, it's just right. It is break time. Oh. I like doing that with burr clover. Oh yeah. Yep. We're going to take a quick break. Our last break. One more segment coming up on Biz Talk Radio Facebook Live. Do stay with us here. It is our New Year's Eve show here. 2023, just around the corner. Stay with us here on Garden America. Okay, gang, we've made it. This is our final segment. A very quick show. Thank you for tuning in. Those on BizTalk Radio, those of you on Facebook Live, we really appreciate your support. And we expect uh, that support and even more, hopefully, in the new year, 2023, John. Wow, I hadn't thought of support. Support. That's a great idea. Oh, where, you're talk- can, where can you send in your support? You're talking about it if we do a GoFundMe yeah. page for Garden America. Go, go fund us yeah. if you'd like to continue to see shows like this. Hey, by the way, go to our, uh, our website, GardenAmerica.com. Check it out. We also have a YouTube channel to watch archive shows, previous shows. And that will be posted up uh, this afternoon. That's Garden America Radio Show on YouTube. Please like and subscribe. The subscribership is, is it's inching up a little bit, but we'd like to see a lot more. So do what you can. Carla says that maybe a daily planner instead of a calendar. Oh, there you go. With a quote of the day instead of the quote of the week. Yeah, your quote of the, the, the week, though, should, uh, they should continue. It shouldn't just be a one-time newsletter once a week. What do you mean they should continue? Well, we should we should have them on another uh, platform hmm. for that week. Maybe um, people still wear platform shoes. Well, short people do, right? Do they? Yeah. Hmm. Desi Arnaz wore them, by the way. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> Random thoughts here yeah. on Garden America. Alex, Alice, yeah. you know when you were asking me the worst weeds at my house, I was. Giving you weeds in the ground, right? I oxalis is one of my worst weeds in containers. containers. Yeah, in with the roses. Yeah, maybe that's what I had this year. Oxalis. Yeah, because I had a lot of weeds in in those pots. You feel a lot better about oxalis if you call them shamrocks. (laughs) That's what they were. (laughs) That that's it exactly. Yeah. Hey, it's time to cut trim our roses. Cut them back, right? January. You can. You can start now. I could start now. I could go home and do it. You could. I think I might. I wouldn't do it till tomorrow because actually this is still December. I need something to do on New Year's Day for a, a while. I think I'll do that. What I always was... feel better, too, when I do that. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's like, ah, I feel a sense of accomplishment. That made you feel powerful. It does. What are you holding, Tiger? I'm holding up um, some paper white flowers that I cut this morning from my uh, backyard to show people today. I took the camera off of it because I was having camera lag problems, but I thought I'd show them because I have a ton. And I'm going to post a picture on Facebook, also on our Facebook, of our my backyard because, you know, this is where I planted just all the leftover paper whites from the nursery, and now I have a ton. It's Nobody awesome. ever asked, asked Tiger what kind of year they had at the nursery. They just go to his backyard. <laughs> what, that was a bad year for bulbs, huh? Yeah. We want to exactly. know what you think of the uh, – what, the aroma of these paper whites? Yeah, some people hate them. Some, some like, like them. some don't. I thought it was like, I was in between. I thought, I can see why people don't like it. I can see why people would like it. Yeah, and we were talking prior to the show about how there's different varieties of paper whites. Right. And some smell good, and some really do have kind of a sickening smell to them. But don't bring them in the house if you don't like the right. smell. Or biosol. <laughs> exactly. Some people think sweet peas are smell too strong. Really? Yeah. Hmm. It's got sweet pea in the very name. <laughs> it's a sweet pea. Yeah. What are you working on, Tiger? I'm posting the picture of the paper whites right now. Nice. Done. Look at you, busy. It's publishing right as we speak. And then I posted the picture of the Princess Diana hydrangea also for people to be able to see. That was a pretty cool flower. I like that one. And you posted that, obviously, on our Facebook page. On our Facebook page. Okay. Yep. So trying to trying to multitask here during the program as we break into 2023. 
So John said that he was not going to stay awake until midnight. Brian, what are you going to do? No. No? I don't care. I, I'm only going to stay what? awake if we still have company at midnight. <laughs> I'm I, who? I, 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 have I I'm feeling. wondering who would stay at your house till midnight because getting out of your house at midnight gets a little tricky. Yeah, it's dark, right? It's dark and windy. And roads we're supposed and, to have rain tonight, too. And right? we're supposed to have rain. A lot we, of rain coming. Really? They, they might, oh, they, yeah. The road, a lot of rain. The roads oh, might wash out. You just you made my weekend. Really? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> you're going to you, you're going to wake up on the first of the year and it's going to be a cuddly like cool morning where you just want to stay mm. in bed yeah you know what uh what plant is that whenever yeah. it rains i've got to turn the pot over because it's not draining well mm. i'll think of it are it's you a live show you, i don't want to panic are you you do coffee i can't remember yes oh yeah so in the morning do you wake up coffee one cup watch the fish tank yeah, check the patio. Just did maintenance on the fish tank yesterday. It looks good. Everyone's happy. See, you're gonna wake up tomorrow morning. It's gonna be a brand new year, and it's gonna be cozy. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be are cozy. You, are you growing coffee? Do you have a coffee plant at your house? No, I can't grow coffee in my house, yeah, Cameron. You can. Yeah, yeah, you, you can. can. In a pot? Yeah. yeah. yeah Who we else sell, knows about we sell, this? We sell <laughs> them at the nursery. Coffee plants. In the houseplant section. Really? Somebody wanted to know if you were if you had uh, finger limes at your nursery. Oh, that's right. I don't know. I don't know if we do. No, no. Nursery. The answer is sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes. Um, yeah, you'd have to call the nursery and ask because the the uh, citrus inventory is always so up and down. Every week we get in different trees. It's like the elevator. And sometimes they have them. Sometimes they don't. So we try to. When yeah, we citrus that. has been hard to get for the last few years. Yeah. I uh, couldn't find mine locally, so uh, a couple years ago I bought mine online from Four Winds Nursery. Well, the one that you posted in the newsletter? That was Lance? from Lance, Is and a it's, a, it's a new red red, yeah, red. red finger line. So and cool. And I don't believe that that's available anywhere yet. Yeah. But he said that uh, it's coming out of UC Riverside, so the budwood is available. Um, maybe it wasn't UC Riverside, but somewhere in the UC system. Uh, so Budwood's available, and nurseries will will be having it pretty soon. That's cool. We have exactly a minute, guys. That's the and then that's the, our show. That's it for 2022, wow. the very last show of the year, Jeez. happening right now before your eyes if you're tuned on or tuned into Facebook Live. Do you feel Do you feel back to normal after COVID? Oh you yeah. Think, do you think 2023 is going to be a normal I'm go- I've moved year? on. Oh, they'll come up with something else. <laughs> well, you know, we on postponed right our potential spring tour just because we weren't sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's starting to seem seem more no- normal, but yeah. we'll don't, see. don't mention that to Southwest Airlines. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, with that in mind, thank you so much for being right there, supporting yeah. us the entire year. We do uh, appreciate bring it. Bring some more people along with you that have never seen the show, never heard the show in 2023. We do appreciate that. So for the entire crew, Tiger Palafox, John Bagnasco, I'm Brian Maine. Thank you so much. Have a great week, a safe New Year's, and we'll do it again next week right here on Garden America, Saturday morning, 8 o'clock, Eastern Time Zone, right around 11 o'clock. Until then, be happy and safe.